Welcome to season two of Friday Night Shoes. My name is Daniel Donskoy. Welcome to the land of the Gauchos, the land of the Messies and Maradonas, the birthplace of the Che Guevara, and in the country of the not so kosher sticks and the red wine. In the country, Madonna cried for, dressed in white, as a Vita. Don't cry for me, Argentina. The truth is, I never left you. Bienvenidos a Argentina. To be precise, we're in the city where Pope Francis once worked as a bouncer. Dude, you ain't coming in, yeah? The city with the most bookstores per capita in the whole world. Bienvenidos a Buenos Aires! Now you're probably thinking, Daniel, you just wanted to travel to South America. And even if that's partly true, it is Argentina's history and the Jews who live here, why we came. But first, hablamos de Argentina. In 1516, the first Europeans came to Argentina. To be precise, they were Spaniards. After about 200 years, the natives here didn't have a lot to laugh about. Because the whole country was taken from them. There was a lot of fighting. A couple of tries to unite with today's Uruguay and Bolivia, a lot of repression, some attacks by the British, extreme European migration almost a hundred years later, in 1816, came the independence from Spain. And then, in 1853, the first independent, sovereign Argentinian state was born. You're probably asking yourselves, how the fuck did the Jews get to Argentina? Or, as the Argentinian would casually say, ¿Cómo llegaron los juides aquí? But it's not only Jews who lived here, but for decades also quite a huge handful of Nazis. That's why my special unit and I are going on a little hunt. What's up? Guten Tag, Freitag, I'm home before we begin. Shabbat Shalom! I'm your homeboy, alles fresh, alles neu. Habt ihr Fragen an den Juden? Herzlich willkommen. Jude, 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 Jude. Einfach nur ein Wort, aber Antisemitismus ist in Deutschland Sport. What? Jude, 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 Time for a little Jewish history. Pay attention. Between the 16th and the 19th century, the first Jews came to Argentina. But thanks to the Inquisition, Argentina had pretty harsh and strict anti-Jewish laws, which means we were, as always, not very popular and had to hide. Later, in the 19th century, was the time of the first Jewish cowboys. A group of Russian-born Jews immigrated, well, fled from the programs and became gauchos here in Argentina. More and more Jews wanted to also become cowboys and came as agricultural settlers to Argentina. This coincided with Argentina's campaign to recruit workers. Salud. Between 1906 and 1912, around 13,000 Jews immigrated to Argentina per year. Just a short time later, Argentina had 150,000 of them. Jesus, they multiply like bunnies! Up until 1938, Argentina's gates were open to Jewish migration. But during World War II, the country, like many others, wasn't quite so hospitable. Hey! Get lost, you fucking stupid Jew! But of course, the flow of Jewish refugees did not stop. They arrived by legal and illegal routes. After World War II, the times were pretty fascist. Ah, fantastic. Under Juan Perón, the Jews here were doing reasonably well. Here they say, maso menos. At the end of the 20th century, anti-Semitism increased on a political level, and Jews started to leave Argentina. But Buenos Aires is still the home of the biggest Latin American Jewish community. I know. We Jews love to be stuck in the past. But now, now we're explicitly talking about the present. We are meeting one of the country's most popular journalists. His name is Alejandro Berkovich. And he's a Jew. Alejandro, are you Jewish? 
Hi Danny, how are you? Yes, I am. Can you prove it? No, 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 put it away. Put it away. I don't want to see that. Our Jews, the better journalists. I don't know if we are the better ones, but we are a lot. I can assure you that. That sounds like Jews in Argentina control the media. Is that true? Obviously. On a political spectrum between Adolf Hitler and Stalin, where would you locate the majority of the Jewish community? <laughs> well, it's quite a wide spectrum, but uh, I I'd say we're all around the political spectrum. It's a, a very politicized community. When they first came from Europe, the first Jewish here in Argentina started clubs, left-wing clubs, and then the other ones started right-wing clubs, just to oppose that first ones. And uh, all families were divided by this. My, my grandpa was a, a communist and he married my grandma, which was the daughter of a right-wing traditional Jew. And they fought all, all the time, naturally. Oh, that That's was a lot. Fun. But like I said, there's one more reason why we are here. As you already know, Argentina wasn't only home to the Jews, but also a hiding spot for a big, no, a huge handful Nazis. With the help of the Catholic Church, the Red Cross and the fascist sympathetic government, Argentina became a safe haven for thousands of Nazis coming into the country by so-called rat lines. But that wasn't enough. President Perón also played his part in protecting the Nazi criminals. And that meant that some of the biggest Nazi stars like Eichmann and Mengele could come here after their hard work in Europe and enjoy their time with tango, steak and wine. It's particularly the story of Adolf Eichmann that is interesting. In 1950, just like many other Nazi criminals, Eichmann was given papers by the Catholic Church. Those helped him reach Argentina via Italy. Under an alias, he was then employed in the factories of Mercedes-Benz. The search for Adolf Eichmann was a joint mission by the Israeli government, the Mossad and the US Secret Service. But the final piece of information about Eichmann's whereabouts came from, hold on tight, the daughter of a Holocaust survivor who dated Eichmann's son. Sounds like a film script, but that is how Eichmann could be found, caught, taken to Israel, and finally hanged. You're probably thinking, now it must be time for the fun stuff. But you're wrong. Because even in the land of the tango, when it comes to the Jews, it's all about tears, fears, and tits. Uh, death. Death. We are meeting someone who really knows all about destruction. The journalist and author Miriam Levin. Among other things, she wrote Yossi, one of the most successful Argentinian TV series, and it's about, well, what could Yossi be about? What? Attacks on Jewish institutions. Hi, Pat Miriam. Hi. So, something pretty terrible happened right here in this place, uh, we Jews call it life, but um, tell us a bit. Well, there was a bombing attack uh, back in uh, 1992. Uh, we had 22 people dead here, um, hundreds of wounded people, and uh, many, many years later, uh, the bombing, the responsible for the bombing, have not been found. Crazy, and any fun facts? Well, yes, uh, two years later, another bombing attack occurred. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 15 blocks from here, yeah. the building of the Jewish Mutual Fund, the AMIA building, uh, was attacked again. Another explosion, 85 people dead, and again, hundreds of wounded people. And guess what? Unsolved. Yeah. Why right. unsolved? Well, there was a cover-up, and uh, justice in Argentina is not working well. We gathered that the federal police, the equivalent uh, to the FBI in the U.S., 
was not very keen to solving uh, the bombing, uh, the terrorist attack. So we are here. Crazy. Thank you for taking the time talking to us. Thank you. Thank you. All these Jews, with all their suffering, all their grief. Slowly I'm starting to understand why you don't like them. OK, I've had enough of all the history and sadness, and I feel like I deserve a little fun. And that's why we're going to go and dance some tango. Yes, tango time. Many cultures claim to have invented the tango. But we were a Jewish show, so we're going to say, it was the Jews. Tango was born around the brothels in the suburbs of Buenos Aires. Maybe some lovely Jewish ladies invented it. Who knows? Buenos dias. It's Friday, which means it's time to take care of the food, because tonight I'm having some guests over. And as we're in Argentina, of course, I will be serving steak. Not only that, but also a small Argentinian Jewish snack creation. We need meat. That looks good. Hola. Buenas. ¿Qué tal? Sí. Eh, yo quiero algo para la parita. Bife de chorizo. Sí. Eh, por cuatro personas. Two and a half kilos. Gracias. We have everything we need, so time to cook. Let's get this going. I'm making steak and knishinadas. Vamos. Jews eat knishin. Argentinians and panadas. We invented knishinadas. The dough was naughty and needs a little straightening out, yeah? So, so cut out the dough and fill it. And we're going to fill it with potatoes and onions. Shit, it doesn't look like it at all. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it looks like... That looks wrong. It doesn't look good at all. It looks like a penis. I made a penis instead of an empanada. I gotta practice this shit. It's everything, but it's not an empanada. There you go. Beautiful. I heard you have to do it like this. And then... And then this, um... Is, is this uh, my beautiful <laughs> empanada? <laughs> so, yes. now we're going to get it. I want you to be pretty for my guests. Not for me, for my guests. Please, for my guests. This surely ain't the prettiest empanada I've seen, but the prettiest knishinada, for sure. And these beautiful Jewish knishinadas are now going right where they belong, in the gas oven. The knishinadas are ready, the guests are on their way, the sun goes down. And we're going to fire up this cow. <sighs> Dear Sarah, Hava, Golda Abramovich, you lived a good Jewish life, and now you need to be a good Jewish stick. Oh. 
fire and the smell of burning flesh. Time for our dinner topic. Argentinian Jews are well integrated as they were part of a majority European migration group that connected over cultural similarities rather than differences. Sounds like Germany. On time. Just like in Germany. Weird. Bienvenido a mi casa. And here are my los guestos. Who will receive the rose tonight? Who can hope to ride into the sunset with me on this episode of The Jewish Bachelor? Our first contestant, Naomi Preitzler. Not only has she proper German Jewish roots, but she has already graced the covers of the Russian and the Italian Vogue and marched over the catwalks for Chanel, Jean-Paul Gaultier, Jeremy Scott and Balenciaga. She's a model. The 31-year-old also describes herself as an alien. And she's a musician. I'm excited because here's the second contestant, Emmanuel Taub. Until very recently, he was a rabbi. Now, he prefers to teach with a very liberal mindset and is allowed to call himself a professor. I hope he takes care of his students just like he does of his tattoos. The 41-year-old also keeps himself busy with Jewish philosophy. Mmm, the Jewish professor, honestly, why not? He also describes himself as a freak. All right, get your freak on. On to the third contestant who is hoping to get a rose from me today. Tamara Tenenbaum likes to dance cumbia and calls herself White Latina. A bit like a phoenix from the ashes, Tamara grew into her lively modern mentality after growing up in a conservative orthodox household and says of herself she's a contradictory Jew. No contradiction is her fast-paced career. Her first series will soon hit screens around the world, because she's a screenwriter. In order for me to decide who might become my one and only, I need a date. A foursome. <laughs> Sounds raunchy? Well, it is. Yo! Lovely people! Hola. 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 Are you Hello. also beautiful? <laughs> Thank you for coming. Oh my god, I'm so happy. Okay, I made something special. Like, literally special for all of you who made it up. Empanadas. 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 It's, it's yes, al almost. It has a Kanisha filling. Oh, okay. They, so, they don't look so how do you call it? Empanadas. They don't look like normal empanadas, but we called it Especially a Kanisha kini kini nada. Okay, it's a nice kini name. Yeah, my first attempt, I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> present it to you very yeah, proudly, yeah, yeah. has a bit of a feel of a penis. Yeah. Um, Gauchos yeah, would like it. it. Gauchos <laughs> would like this, yeah. yes. Um, but before we eat this uh, Kanisha nada penis, uh, I'm, I'm so really, hungry, I really, so, want, I really happy. So, wait one more second. I really want it. <laughs> We're a Jewish show, right? So I'm intrigued to hear if the kiddush in Argentina sounds different. Do we have a volunteer for a kiddush? I can do it. what? You didn't know that about me. I was raised as an Orthodox girl. Really? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So because you, you were the Orthodox, you, you will get the, get the penis. I get the penis. <laughs> no, what? Your family is Orthodox. Uh, the, nobody is an Orthodox you anymore. You went to Orthodox school? Yeah. You had to wear long skirts. No, long she, skirt, long she went to a, wow. an, a Jewish I went to an English, Jewish, cool high school. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I know so your school. Okay, so we need, to, we need to make the cut. So you went to the Jewish cool high school. You went to the Orthodox uh, sad, repressed girls' school? <laughs> yeah, that's okay. school. What yeah. school did you go to? No, uh, uh, not Jewish school. Whoa. Wow. No Jewish ed education because I grew I'm up... Sorry for you. No, I, I grew up in the south of Argentina, in Bariloche. With the okay. Nazis. With the Nazis. Yeah. You grew up with the Nazis? <laughs> yes, 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 around the Nazis. In the south. Yes, yes, yes. Let's yes. try the Knishanadas. Dying. Oh, take a piece. Take Carving. a piece. Everyone? Please, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. We're rating in thank, the proper way. Thank you, one, God. One, two, three. Yeah. Or? Yeah. Thank you, God, for this. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's, yeah. That's not Jewish. And try to make faces like it's really good. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, okay. It's actually good. Mm. 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 Oh. Mm. 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 Mm.
So when was the last time you were at a Friday night dinner? Uh, oh, oh, oh. Not this Friday, the last one with my dad. With your family? Yeah. Who is now Orthodox, but when you were growing up he was not Orthodox? He was not Orthodox because my mom is not Orthodox. Okay. So he was not Orthodox, but then my grandmother committed suicide. So, <laughs> so he was like... Oh, oh great. I, 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 love, I, I love the laugh. It's funny I need the penis. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's so cool, my grandmother. Because you <laughs> laughed so after, cool. we're allowed to laugh. Yes, yeah. I, I need, now no, I need so, the penis so one. <laughs> so he went to, to receive answers like for, with religion. Because his mom died, he got closer to religion. Yeah, yeah. And now he's Orthodox, fully Orthodox. Fully Orthodox. What, yeah. like he's Dad, wearing a hat? <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, like modern Orthodox, like like kosher and pray every day, go mm -hmm. to synagogue, put a lot of money but in the synagogue, you know, no, like, the like, 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 oh, come and read Torah. Mm -hmm. And then comes the guy, like, okay, you have to pay now. What does <laughs> on, on Shabbat, does, does he like touch, it, touch money and use a car? Uh, yes, but he, he doesn't tell that to his Orthodox. <laughs> okay, okay. So we were at the synagogue kind of on, on, on <laughs> Passover. And my sister he was like, Dad, secret. you came by car? He was like, shh, <laughs> nobody knows here. And he touched you in secret? He did in secret. No. And how's the relationship now? I love my dad. I'm in love with my daddy. My dad, no, um, good. Um, <laughs> it was late. No, it's good, but he's always like talking about religion and religion. I'm very like fanat fanatic with religion. Yeah. So I, if you look at my music and my arts, it's like, <laughs> You're very Break the fucking rule. Um, yeah, so this, this, there was this song, like one of my first songs I released. It's called Eve and Eve. It's about like, like lesbian, lesbianism in Judaism. So I, I, I told my dad, hi, dad, can you lend me like Torah books and Talit and everything because I'm going to shoot kind of religion music video. And then like the Torah was like in the ass of the other actress. Okay. So, and the Talit, I was naked with the Talit like this and like, Sorry Your dad must have loved so, that. No. What so he was like, what the fuck? Now you have to burn all this yeah. stuff. Emmanuel? Yeah. Did your dad also become Orthodox after his mother committed suicide? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. They, they are not Orthodox. I, I have a typical Jewish media class family. I grew up in the south of Argentina, mm -hmm. in Bariloche, because I have family disappear in the... Uh, in the last military, you mean the junta? Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, so they they went to the south of Argentina like an exile in Argentina. Yes, yes. Uh, in the 70s, there was a military government here, and more than 30,000 people disappeared. And it is believed that 12% of those were Jewish. But the, the, the great thing that is Bariloche is a place for Nazis. Perfect. Yes. Uh, Perfect combination. <laughs> yes. Jews and Nazis. We were thinking about it when we were thinking where, where we could go with a show and talk about different different countries. We thought it's so crazy that in this country in the 50s, you had like literally door to door. Yeah, yeah like Jewish in the Jewish South Jewish. Nazis and in Entre Rios, Corrientes, uh, yes, the Jewish colonies. colonies. Jewish colonies. You were a rabbi? Were you Orthodox? Uh, uh, no, I was from the conservative movement. Okay. And now from the reformist movement, but I'm the teacher of the next rabbis in Latin America. You teach rabbis? Yes, mysticism and Machshevet Israel. Uh, thoughts of yes, Israeli Jewish philosophy thought. and Jewish yes. philosophy. Crazy. But you're now liberal? So liberal. <laughs> so, <laughs> so liberal. So liberal, <laughs> bisexual. <laughs> Perfect. And how, like, how did you decide to kind of like, or how, how was the transformation going from conservative to kind of like liberal? What, what caused that? I, I, I felt that it was too much power for me. I did my, my, my drashot, my, my, my lessons. Uh, lessons. lessons every, every Friday. And it was a, a lot of power. And I, don't, I didn't like it. And then uh, I saw a lot of hypocrisy mm -hmm. because a lot of rabbis, for example, they talk about eating kosher and then uh, at home, they ate they ham. Yeah. Okay, and you mm -hmm. grew up in Buenos Aires? Yeah. In an Orthodox family? Yeah. So what does it mean? How, how Orthodox? Uh, well, modern Orthodoxy, but um, a little stricter than Naomi's dad. A little more strict. Like, we actually did not use money and did okay. not turn the TV on on yeah. the Sabbath. But not like your dad <laughs> wasn't a rabbi or something? No, my... Ah, uh, this is interesting. This is another funny story. My father died in a terrorist attack in 1994 here. What? 
Like, um, that's a funny story. You can laugh really? about it. <laughs> your dad actually died in the 1940s. Which one? Yeah. Yes, in the Jewish community. Yeah, did you, did you learn about it? Yes, we, wow. we That's where my father died. Oh, my in fucking Amia. God. Oh, you yeah. didn't know that. I didn't know that. Oh, don't be bad. Don't be sad. No, no, it was a no. long time ago. I'm not sad. I'm happy. Your <laughs> 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 dad died in a terrorist attack. <laughs> Let's go to oh, Jews and their suffering, but fuck my life. This time it's hardcore. So my father was a lawyer, but mm -hmm. um, he was very orthodox. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he wore a beard and the hat. Yeah. So he was very orthodox. He was orthodox until he died. Until he died. Yeah, in 1994. So does being Jewish mean believing in God? I believe in God. Okay. I don't. I believe in God. I don't, and I consider myself Jewish, and I don't know, for, for ever, for ages, like, is, is, is it to be Jew, to believe in God, or, or I mean, for, for her, being Jewish is something, for me it's another of thing, course. for you is another thing. And, Absolutely, you know, but like, the, the, the I, I believe in God because I can explain. The God? same if, of love, friendship, angels, and mm -hmm. nothing more. Mm. Love, that, friendship, and angels? Yes, and are the things I believe. That sounds like a cool I new club in I believe in gold. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I believe in gold. I believe in ghosts. I, me too. Yeah. I work it. Yeah, of course. Sounds I like a Powerpuff ghost. Girls. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> no, but you know, in, in my, my Judaism courses in synagogues, I always ask to the people, why are you Jew? And if you have 20 people, you have 20 different answers mm. of course it's, it's, so, it's beautiful it's this I, I love judaism because of that but the interesting thing is when do you proclaim like mm. you were saying you're jewish do you proclaim it publicly yeah always always why i think it's so cool <laughs> <laughs> i think it's cool to it be makes different. me interesting yeah it makes me like like i'm minority i'm a jewish yeah. and i'm a woman yeah now um proclaiming myself as a jewish publicly is that maybe inspiring people like you know you can be Jewish whatever or want. believing in anything and doing whatever you want, like it doesn't, you know, like I, I really feel, I, I, I feel more it. Jewish than Argentinian. See, like, me too, you know, I don't believe in the too. national state. Of course. Um, I don't feel that way. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's good. No, no because Argentina different. saved my life. I mean, I, yeah. I, I grew up in an Orthodox community that was very harmful to me. And then I went to the Rio of Buenos Aires and it gave me a lot. So yeah. I love this place. I love this city. I love this country. So I think when, when, when you choose to portray your Judaism publicly in a fiction or whatever, um, I think you should be as honest as you can be. And in my case, I try also to be very local because I think many people around the world don't know that you have Jewish people in Latin America yeah. and don't know what, what that looks like. I the mean, people from Latin America, they doesn't know nothing about Judaism. Yeah. They ask me, uh, so I saw an Orthodox, so I believe that the Jewish people fuck only Fridays. Yeah, and throw and a the blankets. Yes, and the blankets. Don't you fuck through a curtain? Yes. The curtain was is the middle. Is there any other way, way of fucking? Way. No, of course. No, and the other uh, amazing, uh, amazing uh, question was, this thing that you put in your Helen? Uh, uh, yes arm. Uh, it's for BDSM. For yes. Yeah. And you answer yes. No. Yes. 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 Course, yes. So they made me way. that question. That's so amazing, <laughs> yes. perverse. Right, so we're going to play a game now. Uh -huh, okay. We're, we're going to play a game now, and it is called yeah. Who Was It? I'll quickly explain. Well, I'm going to give you a little shortcut of a story of someone sitting at this table. Mm -hmm. We all need to decide who this story belongs to. Mm -hmm. Once we decided that, let me just see if it's right or wrong. And that person needs to explain. Okay. So one of us at this table almost died in Gaza. Zemanov. That's my boat. Emmanuel? <laughs> I think I that know. is Tamara. You think it's Tamara? Think yes, it's she's revolutionary. <laughs> Who do you think it is? You. <laughs> and I know. But it's you. Mm -hmm. ah. Tell us the story. Please tell us the story. Tell the story. Well, in, order, in order for you to tell the story, oh. because maybe it's super traumatic. Mm -hmm. Vodka? A little yes. bit of vodka. So, I went to Bria, the Taglit, <laughs> the free Jewish trip to Israel, and I went with the arts group. So I was like, eh, I want to shoot a music video there. Why not? So I, I had my new camera and I asked all my friends there, like, hey, can you shoot video for me? And so I, w I grabbed the, um, the electrified uh, wires and I was like <laughs> this. And then <laughs> like a guy there was like screaming, no, go away, go away, it's electrified, go away. 
and I was like, what the fuck? I was so embarrassed. Like, so let's cheers to you not dying. Not I think dying. we will start eating the meat as well, because otherwise we'll yeah. be uh, completely wasted. Cheers. cheers. To not dying, to not dying. Ooh. One of us at this table didn't know what ham looked like until they were 12 years old. Of course, Tamara. Tamara. <laughs> Tamara. Yeah. It's the only choice. <laughs> it is the only choice. So you really didn't know what it looked like. Can you Something describe the first moment when you saw ham? Absolutely. When I was um, 12, like starting in high school, um, in, the, like, in the break, my friend said, oh, I'm so hungry. Um, let's, get a, let's get a ham and cheese sandwich. And I absolutely pretended I knew what she was talking about. Yeah, of course, let's get a ham, a ham and cheese sandwich. I wanted to open it and, and look, but I didn't want the girl to notice that I had yeah, never yeah, seen the sandwich. So I waited for her to leave, and then I opened it. <laughs> and and looked it out. Out. Look, I looked. Can you imagine not to have seen ham until you were 12? I think especially for our non-Jewish audience, a very difficult thing to imagine. And now you eat ham? Do you eat pork? I'm a charcuterie fan these days, like, I'm a connoisseur. I love it. I mean, if you like, put like two, two different types of salami, like, I, I can tell you everything about it. Lechaim to everything to do with pork Lechaim and to uh, pork. ham. Okay. okay. You already know the story, but let's see if they'll guess it. It's about my little friend down there. Uh, one of us at this table, so just the girls can vote, either Emmanuel or me, were circumcised on the dining table of their grandparents. Emmanuel. Hmm? I think that's Daniel. you. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's you? Tell That's that me. story, please. Yeah. What? It was. I was six years I... old. I come home to my grandmother's house, oh and they're God. like, yeah, today we're going to sacrifice you. Oh and I was like, ah, I don't, I, you don't know when you're six years old, like, what the yeah, fuck is happening? You know. And the best thing is, it didn't, <laughs> not even a Jew did it, it wasn't a Mohel, but the Turkish guy who normally circumcises the Muslims. Oh so God. I'm a perfect example of good integration to German Absolutely. society. Yeah, because my dick was circumcised by a Muslim. Wow. Lechaim to uh, integration oh, into yeah. society. Yeah. And to Turkish people cutting dicks. <laughs> Emmanuel, um, you have a cool story. Yeah, now, 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 now we don't have to, we can't vote anymore, but let's, let's do it. One of us at this table was bullied when they were a kid in a Jewish... Um, summer camp or Jewish summer club and as a revenge that person <laughs> peed in the jar of grape juice so everyone Olivia. was drinking that person's pee while they were drinking grape me. juice. That's You're a good revenge. so smart. Yes, me. Pl please tell the story. Tell the story, I'm getting the snake. Uh, yes, uh, when I came from, when, from Bariloche to Buenos Aires, my parents uh, sent me to a Jewish club. Mm -hmm. I, I suffer a lot of bullying. They, they, they told me oh gay God. and all the things. And we were in a kibbutz for a week. And I decided with all the people from our group and from the kibbutz drink juice from a, like uh, a big, tree. yes, like a, a big bottle. So one night I decided to open the bottle and pee there. <laughs> so they in drank a bottle, it? I think? Yes, yes, yes. All the week <laughs> they drank. And they never noticed. No, no, no. You no, never no, told no, them. No, they are not. You never told them. No, 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 no. And the good thing is, oh me too. You didn't notice. <laughs> no, no, no. He drank me, too. me drank too. You drank the same shit. How happy were you every time you knew <laughs> that somebody is drinking your pee? Oh, I, I was like the most happy Jew in the world. <laughs> So perhaps uh, we're all drinking my pee whilst yeah. we're drinking this vodka. Or Emmanuel's pee, to be We'll never know. We'll never know. We shall never know. The good thing is disinfectant, yeah. so whoever peed in the vodka, it's all fine. It's this cool. looks great. <laughs> Very good. We have to applaud him. Yes. This is what we do here. I heard. Applaus per la Okay, okay. Let's show the audience in Germany how we, how we made this. Okay, I think this looks good, right? Finn? Looks good. Okay. <laughs> Kartoffeln. <laughs> you teach Jewish mysticism. Mm -hmm. How much place does sex and sexual understanding have within Jewish mysticism? A lot, because, for example, I, I, I have like some classes about sex and Kabbalah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and sex and angelology, because there is a part in the six 
part of the Torah, mm -hmm. the Bereshit, Genesis 6, when the angels came to the earth and mm -hmm. they fucked the girls. It, and I say that... Chapter, the, I never read this chapter. It's in the Bible. And, this, uh, and I always I say... I've never read this no? chapter. I don't no. think I ever read this chapter. <laughs> no, and, and I always... So, at so, the so what happens? They, what, no, why do they come down? I didn't know that. No, 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 no one. They don't teach this in our <laughs> No, no, you know, because <laughs> okay. I have a lot of work about sexuality and angelology. Okay. In Judaism. Because the, this angel came to the earth because it said they look at the most beautiful girls of the human being and they decided to fuck. And the result of this fecundation, it was <laughs> the Nephilim. The Nephilim are yeah, the, the... The fallen ones. Yes, are the mix of angels and women. women. I, I have the B-side stories of the Torah. Not only the angel ha uh, had, had sex with... Uh, women it was one man in earth that have sex with god sorry again <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard i heard <laughs> who had sex with god with god with the the female part of god the shekhinah the shekhinah and was moses the Kabbalah, the, the zohar said That's what the zohar oh my god <laughs> the red sea, sea opening, opening. <laughs> I get it! I finally fucking get Judas! The Red Sea opening is the symbolism of Moses the, fucking God. The Swat said that the Swat the Yes, is the yes. Of God? No, the Red yeah. Sea is, is yes, the vagina. Yes, yes, the Red Sea. The Swat said. Zohar oh my God! I, I, that I'm Moses so has everything makes sense. No, 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 I'm falling apart. I'm a very my identity crumbles. I need to look everything. Like <laughs> cheers, cheers, cheers! To, Moses cheers was the, fucking God. The, I don't know. The, the unique, I want to try that. The unique human okay. to to have a, a night of pleasure with the Shekhinah, mm -hmm. with the, the female part of God. So, when you grew up, mm -hmm. you grew up conservative, mm -hmm. orthodox. Yeah. <laughs> you grew up not very conservative, but after the suicide of your grandmother, your dad became a not in God believing orthodox Jew who lies about the fact that he's using his car on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you, are teaching people about fucking God in yeah. university. Yes. I'm very, university. very happy that I came to Argentina. <laughs> yeah. uh, cheers to that. I'm in love with all of you. Oh, and you know what? And you know what? Can I tell something about that? that you're what not you want? Like? I believe in aliens. <laughs> I, I'm an alien. <laughs> sorry again. Sorry, sorry. No, no, no. no. Back. I'm are you a Jewish alien? Yeah. I'm a Jewish yeah. alien. Um, so angels, you know, you talk about angels. They're, it's not... It's getting better and better. Angels. Yeah. Cheers. They taught us about angels, but that's a lie. Angels are aliens. You don't, you don't make angels crazy. are aliens. Yeah, and people like religion want to hide that there are aliens among us because it would be a mess in the world. Yes. So they say, oh, they're angels. But because they say angels came from the sky. It's like the aliens come from the sky. So that's, you know, confusion. Yes. As a visit. So we are caught somewhere between Jewish angels coming down to earth to fuck and aliens who are supposed to be angels who fuck people and I'm really looking forward to seeing where this conversation will go. Uh, question. How much, for all of you, mm -hmm. within the identity of being Jewish, because we talk about so many things that are mm -hmm. related to understanding to be Jewish or what's written in some book, what's written in aliens, mm -hmm. what's written in angels, how does all that, like learning about this, growing up, becoming, uh, doing the bat mitzvah, the bar mitzvah, becoming, getting out of a community, having, having an, an orthodox father, teaching at school, at what point does your perception of Judaism changes the more you learn? Religion for me nowadays is about, you know, your inner soul. Yeah. Some, something that I lost through my career. Yeah. When I was 15 years old, I started in that career, and, and it's like no soul, kind of. And Judaism can bring you back, or like religion, spirituality, brings you closer to you? I, I thought that art, doing art, drawing, painting, was my religion, but then it's the same. It's like doing art to show, to sell, to, to show how, how good you are and to compete with others. So it's like, no, art is not my religion, my... My religion, well, I was born a Jew and there's... But did things. the religion help you find your artistic voice? Did your being Jewish help you become the artist you are today? I think, yeah. So, I'll tell you the thesis of a show. 
for every show we have a, an opinion that mm -hmm. we face. And for this show it was that the Argentinian Jews are integrated into Argentinian society because the majority of them came at a time when loads of European immigrants came here. Yeah. Within that immigration wave, they focused on the things that combined them, the things that they're similar to, yeah. being European, being German, being Lithuanian, more than the things that divided them. But don't you think all over the world is like that? No, no, Europe no, is not no, like no, that. no. Me, I'm <laughs> not. But like United States, it's like. No, but only the Americas, United States. But, but if you go to, to Chile, to, yeah. to uh, Peru, it's not to Brazil. No, it's not integrated. In Europe Chile, you have the, the yeah. Jews in the Diesa. But you grew up, the north, you grew up Orthodox? Europe. Yeah. Still integrated into yeah. society? Yes, I mean, even in my Orthodox community, we watch telenovelas. And um, even, even Orthodox people, which are not very integrated, for example, Orthodox guys. Very big football fans, but like mm -hmm. soccer fans, very big soccer fans. I mean, that's not common in other countries, like Orthodox people going to no. the stadium every Sunday. But still, the majority of people and Jewish people I meet in Argentina tell me that they do feel integrated into general society. Yeah, yes. we are. All yes. of What's the essence of being integrated? Well, I think uh, the, the, the essence of being integrated is not trying to assimilate, but yeah. not trying to assimilate. Not trying to assimilate, but. Actually wearing your culture in your sleeve, you know, like being proud of it, like showing, showing it to people, inviting people over mm -hmm. um, to Passover okay. on, on the Sabbath and speaking about it and speaking about it honestly and, uh, and actually laughing about it, not yeah. taking it too seriously. Because when I was in Germany, I thought everyone thought being, being Jewish was such a serious thing. I mean, they were embarrassed. They were they, they had very serious feelings about Jewish people, yes, right? Because of the history. <laughs> because of the history. <laughs> I, but I think I, I it's think time to be less serious about it. Yeah, Peronism is the one of the answers of how Judaism mixed to the Argentine, Argentine society. Okay. Uh, Explain. I, I, I think because the Jewish society in Argentina they thought that Peronism was against Judaism, but it's not. Uh, there are a lot of words about that. That Peronism uh, allowed to came. Jews, Nazis, Nazis, but everybody. E everybody, everybody. And it was the unique country in Latin America that allowed came yeah. everybody. And I think that the, the policy of the cultural policy of Peronism to mix society and to make a middle class mm -hmm. against the, the, the upper class, uh, it allows to the Judaism to, to mix, to, mix to, to the Argentine society. Yes. I brought you questions okay. from <laughs> Germans. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Oh, yes. We call this thing. <laughs> ask <laughs> more meat. Ask an Argentinian. <laughs> no, ask a Jew. Uh, I, ask I ask you to send in some questions for our Argentinian guests, and I will now forward those questions to my guest. What is the best Jewish advice you ever got? It's very simple. And lo rotzel lo tzarich, which means. You don't actually have to do things you don't want to. It's very simple, but it's very good advice for a girl. You don't want it? You, you don't, don't do need it. it. <laughs> good. I don't know if it's a Jewish advice, but it's the words are written in the in my grandmother's how do you say lapida. Grave. Grave. Yeah. It's not the end, it's the uh, path. Yes. Okay. That's it's, beautiful. It's, it's not the, the goal. It's, it's the not path. the goal. It's the it's path. It's the path together. And she told me that and we Put it in her Jewish grave in no. the Jewish cemetery. Is that so the grandmother for, who committed suicide? No, that was <laughs> my that was my grandmother artist that mm -hmm. I learned a lot from her. Okay, the last question from the German audience. I actually like this one so much. I love this yeah. question. What's your number one cliche about Germans? Oh, Germans. Oh, about Germans. 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 What is the number one cliche about oh, Germans? Drinking oh, beer <laughs> because once I went to. Berlin and I saw like <laughs> beer thing with people like drinking beer and on, on a bicycle and they were like ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> they was like oh my god this is too much okay number one cliche about Germans I went to Germany twice but what I was grow was that the German people uh, was anti-Semitic yeah yes so they're all anti-Semites they love beer let's add a bit more layer. 
Um, well, I have two. The first one is that they are always on time, which I find very annoying because I get everywhere like half an hour late. And the other one is, um, is that they are very big fans of Christmas. If you want to join the conversation, do so under the hashtag Friday Night Jews. We have some really interesting topics, including meat, terror attacks, dicks, and angels. I really thank you for being here with me tonight. Thank you. That was Friday Night Shoes. Good night from Buenos Aires.